Welcome back to Pipecast. This is another filler episode, a real filler episode. So today we'll be reviewing Rattray's Howl of the Wind, or Wind. I've always heard the two different distinct titles. I think if you're an American, it's easier to say Howl of the Wind. But I think if you're of Scottish descent, then the correct way to say it is Howl of the Wind. For our purposes, I think we'll just stick with Howl of the Wind. Works for me. So let's cut over to that tobacco. Okay, here we have Rattray's Howl of the Wind. Uh, it is a combination of Kentucky, Red Virginia, and Perique. Uh, the components are combined, pressed into flakes, and then hand rubbed out. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's a pretty, based on just the components and looking at it, it seems very um, well balanced. You can see, you can pick out the lighter red, red Virginia, uh, and then, you know, the, the darker Kentucky and the Perique. You know, it's there. Um, me personally, I'd be hard pressed to pick out the difference between these two. However, um, you know, it, it looks you know pretty well balanced between the darker leaves and the lighter leaves. Um, and then you know, I, I, based on reviews and such, I know it's a pretty strong uh, Red Virginia flavor. So. Um, you know, it definitely looks like, you know, you can pick the Red Virginia out here. So, um, let's get back over there and uh, smoke it. All right, so that was Howl of the Wind. Um, a pretty unique blend as far as, you know, what I normally smoke. I mean, um, Red Virginia uh, and, and the Perique, you know, you kind of think, what, is it a vapor? But then it's, you know, it's got that little bit of extra going on with it, you know. So light in the yeah. Perique. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still in the midst of they killing somebody over there. Um, sound like it's coming down the road. Uh, I'm still sort of in the midst of getting it lit. So I kind of, I mean, oh, and, oh, sorry. We said it's a true filler. Kind of, kind of, you definitely have had it before. You know what it is. Yeah, I smoked a lot of Rattrays in the 2010s, 2011s. Yeah, and then we both smoked it a couple years ago. I don't remember a thing about it, so it might as well be a first impression. So uh, I'll let you go ahead because mm -hmm. I, I need to sort of get my bearings. So this, like uh, Patrick said, is a red Virginia with a touch of Perique and some Kentucky. Um, it's described as uh, a Virginia with... A, a sort of an exceptional strength. Um, yeah, the Red Virginia is pretty stout in this with uh, pretty heavy citrus notes. And uh, what is going on, man? I don't know. You're like, you're like spooking me out. I'm spooking myself out. Yeah, clearly. Like what? I keep hearing things, man. It's Halloween, y'all. And I, yeah, you're making me nervous. <laughs> just keep going. That, 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 that was just an owl. I know it's an owl, but you keep looking over. I keep hearing stuff now. I think we're good. Keep going. This dude in between editing was like, I don't remember opening that door. And I'm like, what? And he's like, oh, that door over there. I didn't open that. <laughs> and then I now, and he's like, well, maybe. And then he gets quiet and he goes, Oh, it's fine. And then he's got walnuts dropping on his shed. <laughs> so now I'm just trying to stay in character. Just be like, yeah, it's fine. There's not someone going to murder me. <laughs> <You couldn't. laughs> and I'm trying to press this tobacco review. And it's like, he's just doing this. Like, he'll be like, but now you got to think there's a camera here. There's a camera here. And there's a camera in front of me. So I'm assuming that I'm looking at my camera cued in right so right now you're looking at me but what you're not seeing is patrick doing this like right over my shoulder like there's a murderer behind me because i mean like if you guys get to see this if it ever gets edited i'd die 
Y'all watch him come right up on me and kill me. Because he's not saying a word. He's just staring like well, it's I, right there. I didn't want to interrupt you talking. <laughs> you got a sledgehammer next to you. Go get that axe. Get the axe? What Go you... get the axe. We might need it. What are you talking about? Is, it... Is someone escaped? <laughs> These trees keep... Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting back in. I think you're being paranoid. I you're... think I am. But you're... Just don't look at me. What? What if nobody comes? To me? Well, they say there's a guy coming. All right, well, that's what I was trying to evaluate. Was there somebody coming or not? Well, you can't see. It's all lit up over there. Yo, big ass head was in the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I think oh, we're fine. My lord. So we're not dead yet. Fan. So okay. It's a Virginia blend and it's pretty it's exceptionally strong for a virginia blend with notes of citrus and um it has a less of a light aftertaste of fruity uh like sort of stewed fruit or fermented fruit less of that more citrus which is interesting because i think more of bright virginia more so than red but this is a red virginia base so i'm wondering if some of that Reek is a little bit more pronounced than what is originally intended. It's got mm. that little bit of pepper and that little bit of, you know, kind of wispy fruitness, but not so much. So there's something interesting going on with this Red Virginia that I'm not familiar with. I'm getting, a, I'm getting, you know, pepper, which you know, if y'all watch any of our reviews, you know, like Windjammer was super peppery on my first light of it. Um, of course, that faded with time because it is a blend that I return to on occasion. But uh, um, I, I'm sort of the perique is kind of pronounced at, uh, at this beginning, you know. Uh, wow, I think this is a Virginia lover's dream. Mm. But I've always really liked this, and I've always really liked Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love. It, it was last year sometime. It was last winter. I was like going through like Virginia crazy. I, I, I smoked a whole bunch of Samuel Gawath, a bunch of uh, Peterson, Dunhill Flake, and uh, McBaron Pure Virginia. And, yeah. and I, I just couldn't get enough Virginia. Um, and uh, yeah, this is kind of, uh, even though it's a little peppery on the front, it kind of makes me, it reminds me of your opinion of uh, Orlick Golden Slice. How it's a vapor, but like it's, it's Virginia. Man, you know, now that you say it, it does have some of that Orlick golden slice grass note. But like this seems like, well, you know, the good news is, is that it is a German blend. This is uh, Retrays, which is, I think, Kohlhaus and Kopp. Oh, is it? I think this is a Kohlhaus and Kopp uh, blending house. Um, and the... Germans tend to like, from my experience with their blends, they tend to like a more citrusy Virginia. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Which may be their processing or maybe their topping. But I still think that this is a really, really good Virginia. Yeah. I mean, I think this is probably, this is a great transitional blend if you're going from deep summer, basically where we're sitting right now, going from summer to fall, so from hot weather to cool weather, this has still got the grassy notes that you want in Virginia with a little bit of the intrigue of the Perique and it sort of makes a really nice transitional blend in between hot to cold. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 because sometimes I don't want that sort of robustness of a Latakia and I don't want the grassiness of Virginia so I need something a little bit more complex. This is a really probably a, a decent transitional blend because I don't catch myself tr smoking any Virginia really or really not even that much Virginia Perique that that isn't like really has a really pronounced Perique yeah you know outside of of the summer fall months yeah uh, uh, winter hits and I'm usually smoking Latakia blooms yeah uh yeah, which was strange to me because, you know, that's kind of what I thought, you know, I would be doing, you know, Latakia in the winter and then Virginia is more in the summer. But, 
Yeah, last winter, man, it, the Virginias were, were hitting the note. And I think, you know, I have a tin of this that I haven't opened. I think it's from 2018, 2019. Um, when we start getting into the colder months, I probably will crack this bad boy open, uh, crack that bad boy open and hmm. uh, smoke it a little bit more. I like it that you have this sort of, like, anti, like, my seasonal tobaccos yeah. i love it like because it's like so you like you get into winter and you're really hitting your virginia stride yeah. and i think that that is crazy yeah i know well and see and i've set my lineup to be you know more traditional you know um grouse more in the summer and which then, is a virginia base yeah which is virginia base and and i you know i would go into peterson flake Go into Golden Slice or the Golden Slice, and then go into Windjammer, and then go into Salani Burley Flake, and then mm -hmm. go into Artisan's Blend. Like that's kind of my those Man, are my go-to. Man, Salani's such a good. That's such a good blend. It is good, and uh, it's like the gold standard of Burley. It is, and I mean, it, well, we'll have to do a review on McBaron H H Burley. I'd like to see your opinion on it, mm -hmm. but um, uh, but yeah, I have it lined up that way. It never, you know, it didn't go that way last year. <laughs> I just went through the Virginias. Just went through, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we'll see this year. I, I definitely, it definitely went to hell because I didn't smoke any this summer. Mm -hmm. um, except for when we did Drucker and Son and Grouse more. That's the only time I smoked. So. Now this does have a little bit of age on it. But I don't feel like it's tamed down the Red Virginia too much. Because this is yeah. probably two or three years old. Yeah. But it definitely hasn't, you know, really tamed the yeah. Virginia. It, and I'll tell you what, it, the Red Virginia is so there, um, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm almost, I'm almost leery of, um, uh, like a nicotine hit. Because, yeah. because for me, it's always been Virginias that do it. Uh, ironically though, Samuel, uh, full Virginia flake doesn't, doesn't do it. Um, and you know, the, the other two that I mentioned that I kind of rotate around, uh, Peterson Flake and McBaron HH Free Virginia, they don't bother me, but it's been random Virginias just out of nowhere. Just, I think, I think there's two Cornell and Dill blends, uh, opening night and red carpet. And I got like three tens of them one time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, one of them laid me out. And I thought it, it was rooster or something. No, I, I haven't even smoked that. I got that tinned up. I haven't smoked any of it yet. Mm. But that exhausted rooster. But no, it was either red carpet or, or opening night. And then the other time that it really got me was I smoked a big old bowl of, um, what is that? Curly Block. Peter Heinrich Curly Block. Curly Block. God, that knocked me out. Really? I, I called him and I was like, like, man, I'm about to, I'm about to go down. And right after I got the phone with him, I was, I mean, I, I never got sick to the point that I throw up, but I, you know, I felt it, you know, man, yeah, curly man, block if it, 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 When it gets you, it gets you. Yeah. I just, the only thing I know to do when the, when it hits is, uh, go take a shower, <laughs> get in the shower, try to work it through and work it through your body. Yeah. I, I've heard eating chocolate. I've tried that, you know, eat something sweet. That kind of helps it. Um, but, um, and also, I don't retro hell Virginia's. Uh, it's just that, that that just adds to it. Um, so I, I try not to do that. But uh, yeah, it, as much as I like where this is going, I'm also how when people talk about nightcap and they talk about you know being worried about it and uh, you know I'm like this is what I'm worried about. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is my nightcap. <laughs> right. Because this could this could get wild, but um, but yeah, I, I, I recommend it. So, uh, you know, I like yeah, to. I mean, like I think that this is up there with some of the top Virginias I've ever had. It would be interesting to see what this. I mean, like I always say, like if you had some sort of accelerator, it'd be awesome to put a ten of this in an accelerator and add. 10, 20 years to it, and then smoke it and see what that would be like. Mm. Because even now, three years in, the Virginia is not as tame as I would assume it would be. Now, I would love to see what this likes when it really sets into its sort of stride of mellowing. 
But it's good. I mean, I think you guys should check it out. Maybe in like 2040, I, yeah. I'll keep that tin. Like I want to, I won't ever open it, and then I'll let you smoke it, and then you can make a blend and name it after some Lovecraftian, uh, what's his name, Gordon Stewart movie. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, that'll work. Uh, is it Gordon Stewart or Stuart Gordon? It's Stuart Gordon. <laughs> Let's just call it Castle Freak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the a, Superior. Yeah, uh, Castle Freak. The Superior movie. <laughs> there's an argument to be made. We won't make it on this, but like, there's an argument to be made that Castle Freak is probably his best uh, Lovecraft interpretation. Yeah. Because it definitely ate from beyond, and and while I love uh, Reanimator, Reanimator, yeah, like it's not Reanimator either. <laughs> Man, but um, but yeah, you know, hey, it's it's uh close to Halloween, so if we've enticed you to go watch some Stuart Gordon, yeah, some Stuart Gordon, watch or some, some Gordon Stewarts. If you know, if there's a good Gordon Stewart movie out there, there, there may as well be. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend going to watch the Stewart Gordon. There's so much other stuff out there. Stewart Gordon is such an odd character, but uh, what the hell is going on anyway? So, uh, we're gonna get out of here before we get killed. Yeah, it's 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 the pressure release valve on one of that, whatever that thing is over there. That's what they want you to think. That's what they want you to think. What, what do you think it is? If it, it would kill us if it were. What's that? I'm just kidding. I live with that every day. <laughs> this guy over here. <laughs> oh, yeah, but there, I can't leave. I'm at, I'm at my own house. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to go in there and go to bed. I'm going to drive away. Mm. Well, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. We'll see y'all next time.